On May 19, 2018, Corkscrew at PE Playland in Vancouver, Canada, the roller coaster from Final Destination 3, was operating normally. A train was loaded with riders and dispatched from the station. As the ride was completing the layout, one rider's over the shoulder restraint became completely unsecured. They were able to hold themselves in place and return to the station without injury. The investigation into the near miss would be headed by Technical Safety British Columbia. They would tear down the failed restraint to determine what had caused the restraint to come unsecured. The ride was a corkscrew coaster that originally opened in 1985 at another park before opening at Playland in 1994. The coaster's trains were made by Aero, a defunct American manufacturer that produced many similar coaster trains around the world. Though Arrow was defunct at the time of the accident, parts and support for their rides was still provided by the American manufacturer SNS. The investigators opened the failed restraint and found that the ratchet device used to secure restraints by the use of locking pins interlocking with a toothed shaft was operating properly. They were surprised to find that the trunnion bolt that secured the restraint device to the locking device itself was completely free of the locking device. The restraint device locked by use of a groove ratchet bar that interlocked with spring-loaded teeth pins. Attached to the ratchet bar was a trunnion bolt that then connected to the rest of the restraint assembly that actually contacted the rider. The trunnion bolt featured a ball joint at the top for connection to the restraint device itself and a threaded bolt at the bottom. The part also featured a nut used for adjusting the tightness of the device's connection with the ratchet bar. With the root cause uncovered, the focus now shifted to why this had occurred now and why any contributing factors to this cause were not noticed. The ride had been in operation for 32 years at the time of the incident and had no reported cases like this one previously. The investigators examined the trunnion bolt from the incident and a new example sent to them by SNS. The bolt from the incident had no obvious signs of failure, but the threads under the nut were stripped causing them to no longer reliably interlock with the threads inside the ratchet shaft for the restraint. The investigators examined the trunnion bolt and restraint assembly from the incident as well as the example provided by SNS under an x-ray and found no deficiency in either components. They tested the quality of the steel used in the components. They found that the jam nut used on the incident bolt was made of grade 2 steel rather than the stronger grade 8 steel the manufacturer had specified. This resulted in 25% less strength. Additionally, the nut had oxidized, causing it to no longer be adjustable as it was effectively seized in place on the trunnion bolt. For the trunnion bolt to function properly, it had to be tightly secured into the ratchet shaft. This was achieved by tightening the jam nut. In the incident restraints case, the seized nut meant that it was not easily noticeable that the nut was not tight on the bolt, as it would feel tight when being inspected due to it being seized. The investigators sourced records of replacement parts for the ride and found that the park had placed an order for 12 new trunnion bolts in January 2013, enough to replace approximately 25% of the existing bolts on the ride. These were not purchased through SNS and rather came from a third party contractor. The looseness of the trunnion bolt inside the ratchet shaft allowed movement that eventually eroded the threads on the trunnion bolt itself as the restraint was used. This eventually resulted in the threads on the bolt becoming so stripped that they could no longer keep the restraint device connected to the ratchet bar. This ultimately resulted in the rider completing the ride with a restraint that was not secured to the locking device. Thankfully, this incident ended in a near miss with no one sustaining any injuries. However, the potential for serious harm existed given any changes in timing or placement of this failure. From this, we can build a few takeaways. Firstly, the use of non-OEM parts is not inherently a problem provided that those parts are made to the same quality as those from the manufacturer and their use is either approved by the manufacturer or by a third party engineer. However, it's important that clear specifications are given to third party contractors and that the parts are tested to ensure that they meet those manufacturer specifications. Additionally, there is a need to test for the possibility of seized parts 
as these can pass an inspection, feeling like they're secure when they are not. As far as this coaster is concerned, the park chose to close the ride forever shortly after this incident, later demolishing the coaster and replacing it. It's important to note that they were not required to do this, as the investigators from Technical Safety BC only required the replacement of all non-OEM trunnion bolts and nuts with ones provided by the manufacturer. To conclude, it's rather ironic that the roller coaster that was featured in Final Destination ultimately may have closed due to a restraint becoming unsecured during the ride. Unlike in the movie though, no one was hurt and the restraint failed due to an oversight that took years to show itself. Thankfully, we now have the full and detailed report so that others in the industry can learn from what happened and avoid the same mistakes. The full report is available as a link in the video description if you'd like to learn more. Additionally, I host all incident and accident reports used in my videos on my website, and you can find a link to access all of those for free in the video description. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this type of educational content on ride safety, make sure to like, subscribe, and share so that these videos get to more people. Thanks for watching and see you next time.